Senator Fisher, welcome on board the AEM Manufacturing Express, and thank you for being on board with Equipment Manufacturing in Omaha. Oh, it's great to be here, Kip, and thank you for coming to Nebraska and being here in Omaha. You know, we're so fortunate to have great manufacturing companies here in Omaha. They do great work, and it's nice you're here to recognize that. So thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. We, we love the great state of Nebraska. I do, too. Uh, I yeah. do, too. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about why manufacturing, equipment manufacturing in particular, is so important to Nebraska. Well, first, I'm just really excited to be here at Elliott. You know, this is uh, a homegrown company. It's important for for Omaha, it's important for the state of Nebraska, and of course it's important for the, the country as a whole. And I think being able to, to highlight businesses, manufacturing businesses like this, uh, drives the narrative. You know, I was talking to some of the workers uh, before we started our interview, and I was saying to them, you have to, you have to tell your story. You have to drive the narrative. You have to be able to go out there and say the work I do every day, that's what builds this country. That's what brings prosperity. Oh, it sure does. And speaking of work, you've been a tireless advocate for equipment manufacturing in Washington. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit about the policies that you've worked on throughout your career and, and maybe what you're looking forward to working on in the future. Yeah. You know, um, I've always been um, interested in infrastructure. I think it's a priority for a, a federal government as well as a state government. When I was in the Nebraska legislature, I chaired the Committee on Transportation and Telecommunications. So to be able to continue that work in Washington is extremely important. Uh, I supported the infrastructure bill. Uh, I was able to get some really good uh, pieces as a part of that bill, and now we're seeing uh, the wonderful effects, uh, the results of that legislation here in Nebraska. Um, it's important for jobs, obviously construction jobs, uh, to be able to to be able to see that. Uh, it's important, obviously, for con for companies like Elliott, uh, manufacturing jobs. It's over four billion dollar economic impact here in the state of Nebraska. Those manufacturing jobs, tens of thousand people um, employed. So it's, it's, it's a good thing to be able to focus on infrastructure and whether that's roads or bridges or energy, uh, energy production, uh, to look at ports, everything like that. Nebraska is also an agriculture state. Yeah. And uh, to be able to work on um, farm bill, I'm also on the ag committee, to be able to work on the farm bill and, and focus on that and again, Manufacturing ties into, into farming. When you look at our uh, ag equipment uh, production across this country and, and all the really cool things happening there with precision ag, you know, with tractors that drive themselves, we have, we have uh, programming that, that a farmer is able to know uh, how much moisture is in his soil, the depth of seed he should be planting for the type of soil he's on. It just goes on and on. So we're very, very exciting times for agriculture and the growth of agriculture. And then tax policy. Obviously, that's extremely important as well. So in the Senate, um, the Senate Finance Committee with Orrin Hatch, you know this, with Orrin Hatch and Rob Portman, uh, Pat Toomey, Mike Crapo, uh, those four senators really wrote that 2017 uh, tax reform bill that we were able to pass. And that has to be um, re-upped, basically. I'm hoping that, that uh, we're able to get the votes uh, in a new Congress and be able to make a lot of the good things that happened in that tax reform permanent. Uh, and then hopefully we'll be able to bring the House along with us like we did uh, the, in 2017 when we passed that bill. So those are, are three things directly related to uh, manufacturing, to the economy that uh, I'm focused on now and uh, working, uh, working forward into the next session of Congress that begins in 2025. 
well, those are three areas of, of massive importance to our industry. Yeah. And I'm sitting here listening to you talk about all of this, whether it's the infrastructure bill, it's precision agriculture, it's the tax code, it's trade. We really do appreciate all that you do uh, yeah. for equipment manufacturers. Um, you know, the folks out there that you spoke to earlier, obviously they're ready to roll up their sleeves. But unless we have friends and champions in, in Washington or in, in Lincoln or in state capitals oh. across the country, we can't get it done. So thank you. No, thank you. Very much. Um, what is the one thing or, or a couple of things that you wish more Americans knew about manufacturing communities, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, you know, larger uh, cities like Omaha, but also smaller towns? We were in Blair last week. Um, you know, we're heading south, visiting a lot of smaller communities on this road trip of ours. What, what do you want people to know about manufacturing and manufacturing towns? Well, again, we have to tell the story. Yeah. You know, you have to tell the story, which is what your organization does for so many of your members. Uh, to be able to say, this is the value we add to our community. This is the value we add to our state. This is the value that we add to our country. Uh, we, we look at manufacturing, and I mentioned the economic impact it has on the state of Nebraska. Think of what it is across the, the entire United States. Right. Uh, when you look at the jobs created just here in the state of Nebraska and what that means for individuals, for families, uh, to help them uh, care for their families, to achieve the American dream, because these are good jobs, well-paying jobs. That's what we want uh, for working men and women here across our country, to have good job opportunities. And so I think by by looking at the value that is added uh, through through manufacturing, that's another story that needs to be told. Yeah, well, thank you for the for the prompt for the reminder. We're <laughs> going to redouble our efforts as we head south. Uh, appreciate that. We're going to wrap this up with uh, a little rapid fire exercise. This is a road trip after all. We're traveling ten thousand miles across yeah. twenty states. So, uh, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Favorite road trip memory. Rapid fire. I mean, United <laughs> States Senator, we talk forever. I, I think, um, uh, again, I, when I was talking out with, with the men and women here, that work here at Elliott, and I talked about on Sunday afternoons, my dad, who worked for the Department of Roads, we'd go on inspection tours. You know, we, we would drive to Colorado and camp out for a week in Rocky Mountain National Park. All, all those kind of road trips. Road trips with our three th sons have always been very dear to me. But uh, those inspection tours with my dad dropping a plumb line, you know, to, yeah. uh, to look at bridges under construction and things, those are the ones that um, are really, really special. Favorite road trip song? Show tunes. And any, <laughs> <laughs> any show tunes. Right. Uh, any show tunes. We'll have to add that to our playlist here. Oh, dear. Uh, final <laughs> question. Favorite road trip snack or treat? Okay, um, Nebraska is a big state, and I, I uh, put a lot of miles on every year traveling the entire state. Uh, I like trail mix. Trail mix? Yeah. There we have it. Senator, thank yeah. you so much for being here today, and thanks thank for you. everything that you do. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you.